This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is about forces and in particular about surface forces and the pressure gradient force. We have three types of forces that we're going to consider in dynamical meteorology, body forces, surface forces, and apparent forces. We are going to, in all cases, relate these to a particle or, or an idealized parcel of fluid. The introduction to that concept is in more detail in the lecture on the body force gravity. We will use the coordinate system, the tangential coordinate system at the Earth's surface, and this is what our parcel will be like, an idealized rectangular or cubic type of parcel that we can relate our forces to. Surface forces. Pressure gradient force is an example of a surface force. Surface forces are proportional to the area of the surface of our particle of atmosphere. Surface forces are independent of the mass of the particle in the atmosphere, and they depend on characteristics of the particle of the atmosphere and characteristics of the flow. This is distinct contrast to the body force, which did depend upon the mass of the body and was completely dependent upon the mass of the body and acted upon the whole body. The pressure gradient force, if we take our idealized cubicle representation of a parcel and we look along the x-axis, we're going to identify the center of that parcel as x naught, y naught, and z naught. We are going to do this because we are going to relate the surfaces to that parcel in terms of an approximation form. So we're going to say that P, the pressure here, on this surface is going to be equal to the pressure here at this point in the middle plus the first derivative dp dx times this distance here of delta x divided by 2, so we're going halfway across this delta x length, plus some higher order terms. So we start with pressure at this point, and we're going to be looking at the difference between the pressure of the surface and the pressure at the center of the parcel. On the surface on the other side, P is going to be equal to P naught, again at the center, minus dP dx, delta x over 2, plus higher order terms. So what we've done in the x direction is to use this series approximation to give us an estimate of the pressure on the surface. This technique is the Taylor series approximation, and we will use this over and over again. And what we will do with this is we will ultimately, in the limit, make the assumption that this linear term, this dp dx times delta x over 2, is an adequate representation of the pressure on these surfaces. If you have any problems with the Taylor series approximation, you can go back to the mathematical requirements for this course and study them until you're satisfied that you know them well. In the linear approximation, we ignore the higher order terms, and by higher order terms we mean terms that if you look to be in delta x, that terms such as delta x squared, delta x cubed, etc., etc., are ignored. We do this because we're going to take delta x to be small, and if delta x is small, then delta x squared, delta x cubed, so on and so forth, are smaller still. The pressure gradient force, the actual force, since pressure is a force per unit area, the actual force is we're going to multiply it by the area of this face, which is going to be delta y times delta z. So the pressure gradient force, after we have ignored the higher order terms, is the force on this face is our Taylor series approximation. It's negative here because it's inward, and that is against the delta x unit variable. It's positive here on the other side, so fb of x, here again the area. 
If we say that the total force is the sum, going back to Newton's law of motion, this is foundational to the Newton's law of motion, is going to be the force on the B, B wall, the left wall, the force on the A wall, the right wall, the right surface. Again, let's return to this figure. We call this surface A, this surface B. We add these two together and we get the force in the x direction is negative dp dx delta x delta y delta z. We want the force per unit mass. So we divide by the density and the density is, is the mass per unit volume. And hence the delta x delta y delta z are absorbed into the definition of the density and we get that the force per unit mass f of x over m is equal to minus 1 over rho dp dx where dpx is the gradient of the pressure in the x direction. The total vector pressure gradient force after we do the exact same manipulation, mathematical manipulation in the y direction and in the z direction is that f over m is minus 1 over rho dp dx in the i direction plus dp dy in the j direction plus dp dz in the k direction west to east, south to north, down to up, and using the notation again that is in our mathematical relationships, that is the gradient of P to F over M equals minus 1 over rho, the gradient of P. The pressure gradient force is an example of a surface force. You can see how it was proportional to the area of the surface, the, in our case for delta X, the area being delta Y delta Z. And you'll see that they are independent of mass and that they depend on the characteristics of the flow. And in particular, they're going to depend upon gradients and what we will call shear within the flow. And that is our introduction to surface forces and the pressure gradient.